Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. Now I've had several questions lately about this old target stand that I lug around the ranch. I want to know who makes it, how much it costs, that sort of thing. Well, the simple answer is you're looking at the guy that made it. Um, it's just made out of parts and pieces I had laying around the shop. Um, one day I just happened to be working in there and was kind of looking through some stuff and it dawned on me that um, I had some parts here that might be able to throw together and, and make a good target stand. And this one's really handy because it's easy to take down, um, throw in the back of the pickup and, and uh, take it up wherever I'd like to, to set it up and shoot. And I really don't like shooting all in just in one spot over and over and over again. And I'm hoping it makes it a little more interesting for you folks that watch my videos um, to see different parts of the ranch. So, so this target stand really works out well for that. Now, it's all made out of mild steel. It doesn't have the, the fancy high dollar AR500 targets. I've, I've got a couple of those that I usually use, but today we're gonna test out some of these mild steel targets that I just made out of scrap that was laying around and, and see how they hold up. So stick around if you're ever interested in building your own uh, target stand like this. Um, hopefully it'll be good information for you. And if you're just kind of interested to see how mild steel holds up to shooting, well, we'll, we'll give you a, a introduction to that as well. So before we get started putting this stand up, I wanted to show you really what's the, the heart of this uh, target stand set up and what ties it all together. Now this is kind of what got me started on uh, designing this. I've, I've come across this piece of 4x4 four four, um, square channel. I had two of them like this, were about 5 or 6 inches long. And I thought, wow, that would slide right over a, a wooden 4x4. Four and so we started thinking about how to how to make a stand from there and really it was quite simple um, just found a couple of, of pieces of angle iron and welded them on here now I cut one leg a little shorter than the other just to get the right angle then found a couple of pieces of a two by four box tubing welded an end on them and then welded them to the angle iron so now we've got our cross member sits in here we've got a leg here and a leg here so the, the last piece of the puzzle, if we want to have a, a stand for uh, handgun targets, then I just welded this box tubing here so that we can put an upright to hang our, our uh, handgun targets. So it's really a, a fairly simplistic design. If you know how to weld or if you know somebody who can weld for you, um, you know, the, the parts and pieces are, are pretty minimal. They, of course, you know, this is just scraps that I found from around the shop. I didn't have to go out and get any of this. So stick around. We'll, we'll uh, get all set up here and, and uh, get this stand put together. It doesn't take but a minute. Okay, now in order to put this stand together, all we'll do is we'll, we'll take the, the end piece here uh, and lift up our cross members, slide it on. Then we've got a couple of 2 by 4s here. Now the 2x4s took a little bit of trimming because these 2x4s actually came off my own sawmill. I've, I have a portable sawmill, or had for several years, and so these are full sawn 2x4. I trimmed them up to, to fit them in there. We got one side up. Now we'll work on this side. So if you, if you do a lot of shooting and, and uh, hit your stand some, you just replace the wooden parts and then you're good to go. Okay, so that's that's all there is to getting the stand put up. Now we've got some choices. Um, so I just put three eye bolts across here, and so we can hang some targets. And some of these targets are just mild steel that I, I found some some circular scraps in the, in the scrap yard. See, here's one. I just welded a hook on the back of it, so we can just slide that in there. Now this is three eighths mild steel. It doesn't hold up real good to. Uh, um, larger calibers. I, I shot it a couple times just testing it out after I made it with a 4072 uh, an 1895 and puts a pretty good ding at them. So mild steel while well, this grand total cost it uh, nothing um, you know it's not going to hold up as, as good. This one I haven't tried yet this is this is thick heavy this is actually a, uh, a uh, flywheel off of a piece of farm equipment. I cut the gear off the outside and then welded a piece in the middle. It's actually cast iron. So we'll see today. We're going to shoot it a couple times, see how it does, but kind of trying to weld steel into a cast iron piece. There are people who are really good welders who can do that, but I'm not among them. So 
Um, we'll see how, how my welds hold. And then, of course, you probably, if you've seen any of my videos, you see I shoot these 3 8 um, AR500 targets a lot. And, and they really handled, handle it well. I mean, I've shot a lot of different types of uh, rifles and, and handguns into them. And there's very little cratering and whatnot. Obviously, these are, are the number one choice. But, of course, they're going to cost you a little bit more money. The other thing that we can do, like if we want to put some on paper, I've just got this a piece of plywood here that I can put a target on and, uh, and a clevis on top of it. And I can just hang that right here and then shoot it on paper. This last target that I have here is another of my homemade targets. This is for guys who are poor shots like me. <laughs> so what this is, is a, a great big piece of steel that was part of the, uh, the retort out at the old Cinnabar mine. And I don't know if they blew the retort up or what, but it kind of is all caved in on one side. I had to weld it back up there. But that makes a heck of a, of a target for, so I can get way back there and, and uh, feel pretty proud if I can make that thing ding. We'll, we'll just see how, uh, how it sounds today. So now if we want to do handgun targets, it's pretty simple. And I forgot a couple of pieces. I'll be right back. A couple of the upright pieces to set it up there. All right, so now I've retrieved these uprights. They're just a little short piece of pipe with a, a piece of tubing welded on the end. They just slide down into that tubing I was showing you earlier. One on each end. And then we've got a, just a piece of steel pipe that slides in there. And some, these are, these are mild steel as well. Um, these targets, I just had some, some round pieces out in the scrap pile so I, I welded a, a strap and then just some, some tubing on the end and these are these are half inch mild steel put a couple of these on each end okay oops slid it on out of there And this one I, I've actually shot a couple times just trying it out and, and held up pretty well. I was shooting a, a 44 Magnum, I think it was. And so with handguns, even with the mild steel, um, the targets hold up a whole lot better. All right, so just that fast, we're set up and ready to start doing some shooting. And we've got a we've got a uh, whole range of different targets that we can we can put on here and use. And the best part is the grand total cost of the whole thing was well, I think a couple of cans of spray paint was just about it. The uh, AR500 targets, of course, they they would cost a little something. But my good friend, the oyster farmer, who comes over and uh, hunts on the ranch here, he always brings me some goodies and some seafood whenever he comes over. And he happened to throw them in one time, so. I, I really don't have anything but a couple cans of spray paint into this whole thing. So we're going to kind of get set up down there with a few guns and, and try them out and just see how, how some of these homemade targets hold up to some uh, different rifles and different calibers. Okay, so let's check out the lineup of guns we're going to use today to test out these homemade targets of mine. We're going to start off with the kind of the lighter calibers and work to the heavier hitters. And first off, we're going to we're going to use this uh, Model 53 takedown 2520. Um, pre pretty lightweight to start with. And then we'll move up. We're going to use a, the same diameter, but uh, a little more powder behind it. This 1894 and 2535. This particular one's a pistol grip and has a double set trigger. Okay, Next up, we're going to start getting a little heavier hitting. We're going to go with this 1895 takedown in .30-06. This particular one I, I killed a, uh, a antelope with here a couple years ago. So I know it shoots pretty well. And then to finish it off, we'll, we'll test them out with this 1886 lightweight takedown in, in uh, 4570. And just for the fun of it, we'll test out those handgun targets. And for that, we'll use this first-generation single-action army in 45 Colt. This particular one's a, 
what we call a long flute where they they used up some of their uh, cylinders from their double actions that have a, a longer flute cut into the um, cylinders made in I think 1913 so anyway we've got a, a pretty good little lineup of, of guns to test it out with and um, just couldn't come out here and show you the stand without taking a few shots with it and we'll we'll just see how some of those mild steel targets hold up to some of these okay so what we're gonna do we'll uh, take a couple of shots with each of the rifles one on each of the smaller rifle targets up there and then uh, we maybe move up a little bit get a little closer for the handgun targets with the, the old single action army revolver and then we'll take the same rifles and we'll move back a ways and, and uh, put a few shots at that gong there. We'll start off with this Model 53 and Okay, now we'll see what happened with a little more powder behind a 25 caliber bullet. Okay, so let's add a little more velocity, a little more weight. We'll, we'll shoot this 30-06, 1895. <laughs> I can see from here it went right through that uh, 3 8 mild steel. Okay, so let's see what happens with this uh, 1886 and 4570. I've got a pretty good idea it's going to do kind of similar to the uh, 30 6. Holy Toledo, look at the hole it put in there! <laughs> It looks like that mild steel that I welded to the cast came completely out. <laughs> okay, let's go check it out. Okay, so we know that didn't work. It's really hard to weld uh, steel to cast iron, and I didn't realize that flywheel was cast iron until after I started welding on it and the cracks started appearing, but you can see we hit uh, hit that over on the edge and it just popped that thing right out and broke all those welds off. You can see that uh, cast iron isn't, uh, isn't holding the weld very well. There's a piece of it right there. And then on the other side here, where that 30-06 with a lot higher velocity went right through, this 4570 here, it made a big crater, but uh, it, it held up. It didn't go all the way through. Okay, so let's uh, try that handgun out. Okay, let's try this uh, old single action arm and long flute out. See how the 45s do on the mild steel half inch target. Well, I shot less. Did it again. Let's try another target. That one's got a hole in it. Dang. There, I just wasn't compensating enough. Let's try this one. Got that one. Okay, to make it a little more challenging on this this uh, great big gong, we've backed up here quite a little ways, and probably about to the edge of my range with open sights with my tired old eyes, but at least we got a great big target to shoot at. I think I got it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's try 25-35. Oh, we still have Nifty in there. Oh, shooting high. Okay, hot six. Yep, we had an empty in there too.
<laughs> Went through it, I can see the hole in it. <laughs> okay, let's try this 4570. <laughs> <laughs> no question about that one. <laughs> so with this uh, 1895 and 30-06, we just seem to be punching holes through that mild steel. Let's see what happens with the AR-500. I think we can just shoot all day long. It doesn't hardly even leave a dimple on those targets. Well, from the looks of it, we can go cheap on our target stand, and I really like this target stand. We can go cheap on our handgun targets out of mild steel, and this, of course, is half-inch mild steel. But I don't think we can really get away with going cheap on our mild steel rifle targets, at least if we're shooting things like uh, 30-06 and 4570. These. Uh, AR-500s, they really hold up. They, I mean, you can just shoot those all day long and just barely leave dimples. And <laughs> we kind of uh, perforate these mild steel targets. So, well, this has been kind of fun for me. Uh, I've had these targets sitting around the shop for a while and wanted to test them out. So now I know they'll just go back in the scrap pile. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.